Good morning. Okay, so here with an outrageous article about NHS guidance regarding trans patients. So last night I saw an article from the Times, which I couldn't read most of because I'm not paying for the subscription, um, but it was talking about the Aryan and Ayrshire uh, NHS Trust and their their guidance about um, supporting trans service users. I've tried to access the original document myself, it seems to have been taken down. What I did find is that they released a statement on December the 8th on their website, the NHS Trust, saying that, they're, that, that the policy is under review now. I did manage to find very similar guidance from Leicester NHS Trust though. Now, we have three major issues with this. There seems to be no consideration for cis women, ofs. Um, they are using the words sex and gender uh, interchangeably. And most importantly, they are putting trans patients in danger with this guidance. And I'll explain how at the end of this. So this is a decision that was made by three admin staff for the trust, for the Leicester um, Trust. Um, seemingly not medically trained. That is relevant. Um, the guidance gives a glossary at the start of a, a glossary of terms where they clearly indicate that um, sex and gender are two different things. Sex is biological stuff um, and gender identity is about expression, femininity, masculinity, and all of these secondary characteristics that go with that, etc, etc. Something we all know. <clears throat> they then go on, and here's where it gets crazy, to talk about how trans patients should be put on the ward in line with their gender expression, their true gender identity. They refer to female and male wards for this throughout the guidance. Now, as their glossary rightly pointed out, female and male refer to sex, a uh, biological, medically relevant <laughs> differentiation. Um, from what I've seen in hospitals, wards are usually only differentiated by sex when medically relevant um you know if you're if you're there to get your cervix worked on probs for females uh if you're there to get your prostate worked on probs for males trans women will be on male wards trans men will be on female wards because that is biologically and medically relevant um, within the guidance, it seems that they don't really care about what cis women <laughs> might feel. Um, usually if a woman is requesting like a female only setting, it's based on past trauma or religious beliefs, something like that. They deserve protection under the Equalities Act as well. Um, however, the Leicester guidance, there's a risk assessment at the end um, where they decide, does this need to be reviewed by an, another panel, an equalities panel, based on, are we going to get sued <laughs> for this? What's the risk of getting sued? Um, they deemed it low risk, no extra, extra uh, scrutiny needed. Um, I completely disagree with that decision. I think that's crazy. And not just for cis women or cis men, but also for the trans people. And I'll tell you why in a second. Um, now, with more and more people passing very well because of good surgery, um, earlier hormone replacement, earlier therapy, all of that kind of stuff, um, 
as the guidance points out, it is the trans person's right to not disclose what their um, previous gender was, uh, what sex they were assigned at birth, etc, etc. They don't have to disclose that. And as the guidance also points out, if they get a gender reassignment certificate, they get a completely new NHS number and they don't have to say in their notes, which is their right, I guess, um, they don't have to say that they're trans. There doesn't have to be anything in their notes if they don't want it. Um, so people treating them may not know that they're trans, depending on how they present, whatever, what surgeries they've had, etc, etc. Now, this is dangerous for trans people. If a trans person goes to a hospital and is put on a female only ward, let's say a, a trans woman, gets put on a female only ward. Um, they are going to likely be given treatments, medicines, um, all of that based on being a woman, their height and weight. So medications are given based on sex, height and weight because it's medically relevant the biology uh, the biology is medically relevant male bodies and female bodies are different inside and out they require different levels of medication they require different sizes of um stents and all sorts hearts are bigger in males lung capacity is is bigger is more in males, um, there are a lot of medically relevant uh, aspects of female and male biology in a medical setting. If a trans man is put on a male only ward and doesn't disclose that they are trans, they are likely to be given medication based on being male and their height and weight. Depending on what is in that medication and what it is for, they could overdose. I'll give you an exa example. So recently I went to go to the dentist to get an awful wisdom tooth out and because of a previous heart condition I had to, I couldn't get it done in the setting. Um, because of the amount of adrenaline in the anaesthetic, they worked out the amount of adrenaline I could have based on my sex, height and weight. If they do the same thing with a trans man, thinking that they are male, they may be given too much adrenaline. They could die. Same with pain meds. They could be given way too much. They could die. Same with preparing for an operation. Let's say you need a heart stent. What if it's the wrong size based on <laughs> assumed sex? This guidance hasn't taken into consideration any of the like medically relevant parts of biology, which is what hospitals are there to do. You're there to consider medical issues based on biology, not political issues based on societal expectations or political correctness. Um, this is a decision that shouldn't have been made by admin staff, particularly only three. <laughs> it's insane. Um, so we've got cis women not really being cared about, we've got um, 
religious views not being considered. But most importantly, we've got trans people being put in danger in the name of supporting trans people. And it won't be until enough of them have died that people start reviewing the guidance and then go, oh, actually, we've missed quite a lot of stuff. Perhaps we should have sent this to another panel to also check if there's anything we missed. Us three women making the decision for the whole trust of Leicester and Northamptonshire, seemingly. It's crazy that they're just not thinking properly at all. And it's causing division where there doesn't need to be division because as the guidance keeps saying, these are female and male wards, not woman and man wards. Gender isn't relevant here. Biology is. I, I'm not even sure of that many wards that are differentiated by sex. I'm pretty sure they're only differentiated by sex when relevant. I got a heart, heart operation, as I've mentioned, heart condition. Um, I was on a mixed ward. Fine, absolutely fine, no issues. Um, in emergency settings like A and E, mixed wards. The only time I can think of going on a female only ward was when I visited my mum when she was giving birth. Because funny enough, <laughs> being female is quite relevant to giving birth. A maternity ward largely for females. <laughs> um so I'm not even sure what this guidance is is doing really <clears throat> and it does talk about for children as well it's based on their gender identity and it shouldn't be questioned it shouldn't be forced to be disclosed anything so now we're talking about potentially putting children in danger as well based on trying to seem politically correct and that just seems crazy to me Biology is medically relevant. Female bodies and male bodies are very different. And it's trans people who are going to be endangered with this guidance. Really. Okay, anyway, I'm just going to repeat myself from here on. So, peace out. Peace and love. Bye.